So you're over there, man. Pretty much the DC dudes, they want their shit back. They take their shit back. There's some conflict. So what ends up happening after you guys get to get all this shit back? Uh, you know, we get all our shit back and, man, we came together and, you know, we had to form that homie, you know, that, that DMV black thing. You know what I mean? We started having homie day. You know, we, and then we were so far out that we had to show, even though we didn't have great numbers like the gang members and we was on the gang yard, you know, uh, we had to show the gang members that we were together and the tight knit. Like, this is where, you know, the homies bickering and arguing over petty shit. That's, that's where that shit went out the window because, like, we was outnumbered. We was outnumbered what? Shit. 10 to 1. You know what I'm saying? But Power, I, it, Power in numbers, right? Right. All right, so, you know, and that's where the big, you know, the homie Nut said, you know, he was like, man, listen, man, we outnumbered, you know, wherever it started, it need to end there. You know what I mean? Whether you come to a resolution or whether you make sure that that dude don't go on his, the rest of his homies, there's something going on. You know what I'm saying? And that's where, you know, I learned zero tolerance. Like, I already had that that edge with me, like I'm, you know, I'm front line, I'm gonna work, right? Now it came a point where, but by this time I learned consideration, I learned, you know, excuse me, I learned manners, you know, I learned my mannerisms, right? Because I seen a dude get stabbed over a water fountain, dude cut in front of a dude on at the water fountain, I me mean, uh. The um ninety the 190 uh water dispensary thing. Dude cut in front of the dude early in the morning, old timer trying to get some coffee. Young dude cut in front of him in line, old timer say, Man, hey, you don't see a man standing in front of you? And Shaw is like, Yeah, I saw you, but you way back there. You know what I'm saying? I didn't think you was trying to get no water. He say, Oh, okay, now nah, I just wanted to make sure you saw me. And it, old time, old timer walked off. When they got his when they got his knife, you know what I mean? The knife shot the ass down over some 190 war. You know what I mean? So now, you know, like I'm learning. I ain't as penitentiary and literate as I was. So about the time I get here, I knew what should and shouldn't be done. I knew what should and shouldn't be said, right? I was still learning, but I had a, a better idea, right? And I knew how to conduct myself. Right. And um, so what happened was, you know, I had I was walking the fine line, but I had zero tolerance. You know what I'm saying? So I didn't have room for a person to disrespect me. And I'm, you know, I'm rassing myself like, damn, should I crush this dude? Because I don't want to get sent to the hole. I don't want to get shipped in my mind. I'm like, I don't want to be down here anyway. You know what I mean? I'm trying to bust his ass, go to the hole. You know, uh, get 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 on some psych medicine. Try to see if I could duck that smooth program. You know what I mean, and hopefully get back closer to home. You know, you talked about you know zero tolerance. You know, at one point when you jumped on on the homie that had that you know crazy ass charge, you know he stays, you stay, and he ends up stabbing you, right? Right, right, yeah. So, and that was another thing. Like I said, oh, I ain't got room for that again. I don't have no more room for nobody leaving nobody around me. And that's what, like, a lot of people beat me in the head within the hole. They like, man, it's like, what the fuck was you thinking? Leaving the dude in the unit that you just, like, you literally banged his head into the motherfucking bone and knocked that boy out. Like, what was you thinking? I said, nah, I'm listening to Sean, you know, and Sean, like, man, that's the Muslim brother. It's over with y'all. Leave that shit alone, go home. You know, and I gave him, I gave him room. But it's crazy guy went on the yard to, to talk to Champ. The big homie Champ. So I'm like, Champ, man, you know, I just fucked the dude up, man. It's, you know, they, I got the paperwork, he a rapist, blah, blah, blah. So Champ, like, man, we he at now? I say, he's still in there. So, you know, that was my big homie. That's who I ran up under, Champ. You see what I'm saying? That's who all the front line and all the aggressive youngins ran up under and looked for advice on what, you know what I mean? And, and looked to get us out the hole and looked to, you know, give us, you know, he, Champ ain't gonna tell you nothing he won't do himself type shit. You know what I'm saying? 
someone that you look up to, man. Someone that you're like, yo, this dude's an older dude. You know, right. guidance and you're, hey, listen, man, federal prison. You're in the jungle. You're in the jungle, right? Right, 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 right. I'm in the jungle and I don't know. You know what I'm saying? So chap like, man, he's still up there? And I say, yeah. He said, man, you either you need to get out of there or he need to get out of there, right? So I'm really going back to the unit to deal with him. You know what I'm saying? And once I stepped through the door, the door right here, the shower was right here. It was shower curtains. I'm, I'm walking to my cell. I remember, you know, every day I leave out my cell, I, I close my cell a certain way. And this would tell me whether the police went and searched my cell. You know what I'm saying? So when I seen my cell, my cell door was cracked. You know what I mean? So I'm, I'm in my head, even the police just went in there or slim in there hiding or uh, sitting on me, right? So boom, I heard a curtain. So when I heard a curtain, I felt something like hit me in my back, boom. So I'm like, what the fuck was that? I said, Slim, what? No. So I turned around, you know, it was me and him. You know what I'm saying? So I stepped on, boom, we, we rumbled, boom, 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 boom. And I'm, I'm, I'm paying attention how he's fighting. He's swinging overhanded. So I'm like, Mo, like, Mo, what the fuck? Like, what the fuck? He fighting like a woman, right? He fighting like a girl. But now I'm, I'm feeling something different. My adrenaline is rushing. But I'm feeling like, I say, man, something don't feel right. So I pushed him. I look. I said, oh, he got a knife. You know what I mean? But, you know, long story short, in my mind, I sat in that hole a year and a half saying to myself, I'm not giving nobody else that opportunity again. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not, I'm taking all, like, you know, and I gave my knife to a Baltimore homie. You know what I'm saying? So I gave my knife to the Baltimore homie and I told him, hey, be by the door when I come back in the unit. That's how we would do. Because they had metal detectors. So if I didn't have a floater, I would give my knife to a homie and say, meet me by the door when I come back into the unit, right? You know, so he was off doing whatever the fuck he was doing, didn't meet me by the door. I wound up getting, you know, I wound up getting stabbed. You know what I'm saying? You know, so, and, the, and I'm on my way back to the yard, champ, champ, uh, egg yolk, Andy and all them pushing to get me back on the yard. And uh, I'm on my way back on the yard. Next thing you know, the deuces just get to going all cold blue, uh, uh, cold blue, uh, commissar, cold blue C1, cold blue C2, cold blue A4, cold blue, uh, 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 kitchen, cold blue. I'm so I'm in the home. I'm hearing the keys and shit running. I'm like, damn, it's going off out that motherfucker, right? I'm like, I am. I post been going back to the yard this week. And man, they got to bring in the homies past. And I'm like, man, what the fuck happened? Like, man, we just got it to the crib. So, you know, but by the time I got there, yeah, that shit was over with. Yeah, I, so anywhere I get a tour with somebody, yeah, we gonna deal with it right then and there. Let it go, you can't stay. Let me ask you this, right? How many times did he stab you? I got stabbed. 11 times. Damn, 11, 11 times. Time. Uh, you've seen some people probably get stabbed one time and die. Another other dudes get stabbed 20, 30 times and live, right? And that's what I tell people. I say, now, if he would have had a better knife, because, you know, you got people that don't know how to make knives, don't know how to sharpen knives, you know, and a lot of people run around with dog bullshit now. And if he would have had a better knife, he, I would have died. You know what I mean? He would have killed me. You know, but, you know, thank a lot. He had a bullshit knife. You know, and then when I, you know, when the first hit, you know, it was his only best hit. The rest of them was a rack of nicks and scratches. You know what I mean? You know, but I stood there with him. You know, and I was trying to take his motherfucking head off, you know. But then when I found out he had a knife, when I realized he had a knife, I grabbed him. Now all the fist fighting over with, now it's time for me to disarm him, right? So when I threw him into the wall and tried to un uh, uh, disarm him, this motherfucker had ace bandages and strings tied to his motherfucking hand to make sure I couldn't get that knife about it. You know what I mean? Let me tell you this. One of your homies, right? One of your homies yeah. stabbed in, in Lee County. Got into it one of your homies, but he, he was not He was one of your homies, but probably not. Chinese. Right. Eddie, ever run into Chinese Eddie out of D.C.? Yeah, I was, I was, well, I, I think I was in, uh, I was down Hayesman with Chinese Eddie. He said he stabbed me in USP Lee, man. I had knocked him out a week later. Yeah. Let him stay on the yard, and I learned I learned a valuable lesson. He stayed on the yard. I stayed on the yard. I let him ride. Oh, glad. Yeah, and he, he stabbed, yeah, I know. He stabbed yeah. me in 2009. He stabbed me in the back. He hit me two times in the back right by my spine. But um, I took I did take the knife from him, and 
I tried to, I, I didn't kill him, man. I, I let him live, but I had my appeal in. I threw the knife to the side and just beat the brakes off him. And then he ended up getting transferred over to Hazleton. Um, like that dope, like that dope, real. Like, like, yeah, I know, I know, Eddie. He used to run the gambling and shit like that, too, wasn't it? I don't know if he, he wasn't gambling when he was in Lee County. He had a cigarette oh. habit all the time. But yeah, it's the same dude, man. There's only one Chinese Eddie in the feds, right? Yeah, yeah, with the glass. I know Chinese Eddie, yeah. I think I was down Hazen. I was down Hazen in all. Yeah, I think it was Hazen I was at with him. You went to Hazleton from Lee County. But anyway, you know, let me ask you this. What was the most dangerous prison that you were at? What, what do you think was the most dangerous? You've been in some dangerous places, brother. Hold up. I've been, I've been, I've been, Pollock, Pollock, we was in, Pollock, 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 Pollock. Them were some of the worst knives I ever seen in my life. Like, I ain't gonna lie to you, man. When they used to shake down and some of them weapons they used to pull up out their unit, man, listen, right? I used to be in my head like, Ain't no waste now. And there's, you know, a lot of Spanish dudes. Like back then when I was down pro I didn't know nothing about busting holes in walls and creating hiding spots with the macros and all this shit. I ain't know nothing about this shit, you know what I mean? I didn't know nothing about, you know, like a motherfucker would sit there, you know, and and and, and like dig a hole just to hide a knife. I didn't know how to do that shit or how, you know, I didn't know they I didn't know nothing about fake walls and you know, I didn't know, like, you know, so, you know, so. Well, it's time. You learn a lot. You learn a lot being in, in federal prison, right? In time. Right, right. Especially what kind of knives them motherfuckers had. Them motherfuckers, they'd do a shake down. Somebody drop a note, and they'd go in there and get them knives about there. And I'm sitting there looking at them, pulling the motherfuckers out one by one. And I'm in my head like, hey, you know what I mean? It's I'm dangerous. glad that. Most dangerous gang in, 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 in federal prison. I did a little video when I first started my channel, and uh, people got mad at me because I didn't put the D.C. Blacks on there. I said, because they ain't a gang. Because D.C. Yeah. Blacks, to me, weren't running around just committing vicious violence. I, and at the top of my list, I put the Southsiders. Like them, you know, I've been on yards, Big Sandy. There's 400 of them dudes, man. And, and they were, you know, at times looking for, that, looking for that business. Who do you think was the most dangerous gang in federal prison? Oh, the Southsiders ain't got nothing on the Serenio. Well, that's again, again, the South Siders and Serenos are the same people, right? They are? I've yeah. I, I never been around South Side. Yeah, well, I South think South I was in Pollock. They're the same people with the with different names. So the South Siders, that's 18th Street, Serenos. Yeah, I just know Serenos, Pisces, 18th Street, like all that type of shit. But like, you know, them motherfucking, them South, if the South Siders are Serenos, once that black hand make that call, man, it's over with. Like, so, you know, I seen I seen white boys put that. I, it was a white boy I was in Victorville with. You know what I mean? He came out the motherfucker 88 when they started releasing people from 88. This white boy told the warden three times, tell him to send me back to 88. The warden in Victorville told him that you know how to get back to 88. I'm sitting there, and this is crazy because I'm in line. I'm in line getting child, I mean, waiting to go in the child hall, and I'm hearing the warden tell him, you know how to get back to ADX, right? So I'm like, you know, but I don't, you know, I don't know how the fuck to get back to ADX, so I don't know what the fuck he tells him. The white boy goes back into the unit, right? And he killed one white boy, boom, hung him to the bunk. Hung him to the bunk. We was in Victorville, California. He was down there. I was in 4A. So I think he was there six eight. He was down there in the unit with rock and nothing all that. So he kills one white boy, hangs him to the hangs him to the bottom. He mind he on the top bunk, hangs him to the bunk. All right, he to the and then go out the cell, grabs another white boy, drags him back into the cell, kills him, hangs him to. I'm talking about a little nerdy looking white boy, hangs him to the bunk. Right, so. They locked the yard down. They say they went in there. So the police, you know, they telling the story. They say they went in there, right? This this white boy was not, the, you know, not to say white boy, like, like you know, I don't, I'm not racist, right? I got white people in my family. But, you know, the white guy, right? You know, he... You got to explain it to me, brother. You ain't, go ahead, man. You ain't got... <laughs> uh, you know, no, nah, you know, because, you know, I don't want to seem 
you know, I don't want to be, you know what I mean? People like, oh, you talking about white boy. You know what I mean? But the white guy is in the bed on the top bunk drinking coffee, reading the newspaper with two dead white people in that motherfucker. You know what I mean? So I done seen, I done seen another white guy named Huff. Huff, Huff, I forgot his name. Big old white guy named Huff or son. He he didn't he didn't knock one white boy out. He tried to run him up. I guess the white boy was caught, you know, fucking with a you know a boy or something. Some weird, something weird happened. I think the, and he, the other white guy, I think it was a peck of wood or some shit. Something weird happened. But the white guy coming to the unit, Huff hits both. When he hit him, the white guy goes out. He takes the white guy, drags him to the stairs. Right. Mind you, every they done been locked up for this shit. So they got locked up charged, wherever they at now they at. So this ain't no secret, right? He puts the white boy's head on the top of the step, right? He on the top, he on the top tier. The white boy's head is hanging off the top of the step, right? And he's sewn at the white boy's neck, trying to cut his head off. In Victorville, right? Yeah, that was at Victorville. Both of them both of them vicious white. Boys was in Victorville. They, they, but I seen Serrano that, like, now you saying Huff and, and, and the other white boy, they don't like these types of people. They do, you know, they might got personal, but a black hand, right? A black hand is so powerful, right? With them Spanish boys, right? That he said, get them. And if they, man, I, when I was in, when I was in, when I was in, where I was at, Hazleton. Right, the black hand told the Mexican, and the and and the Serrano was about to go home in a few weeks, but they they don't know a lot. Uh, them, a lot of black only black hand I see go home was um man, what's his name? Man, he was the youngest. Uh, he was the youngest black hand. Man, he was in Victorville with me. I forgot his fucking name. Man, Bobby. Bobby went home, but the rest of them they they died in jail. They trying to get high. Bats and all them, man, they trying to get high and, and, and send them other Serenios go kill people, right? So, motherfucking, uh, the white boy, I mean, the, the Mexican was like, he was running around like, yeah, it's like, he, he the one that did my sleeve. He the one that did my tattoo. He the one that did all my tattoos. He was like, yeah, it's like, you know, I'm about to go home, man. You know, when I leave, man, you know, you need to hurry up and get tatted because I'm about to leave. I'm about to leave. And they called this number, Snub. They called it. The motherfucking black hand called them and told him to kill the dude. Dude came down there, wasn't supposed to be right. And he went in there. He went in to kill the dude. He, you know, they walked him into, they got the dude got off the bus, gave him fake shower security, walked the dude to the shower. Soon as the Serrano that supposed to be fucked up got butt naked. Oh, he wasn't even fucked up. What happened? He had a, he, he got a shot for jacking off in the hole. And they gave the they gave the green light to kill that boy, man. So for him busting heads in the hole, jacking off in the hole, beating his dick in the hole, they gave because they got the shot, they gave the green light. And that's the fucked up thing with the SIS and the feed. Them SIS and them counselors give them black hands and people of authority those kinds of shots. Like if you ain't child molesters, if they ever bust heads, if they hot. They gonna give it to him. You gonna get it. So anybody that ever go to the feds, we ever if you got a jack and all problem, if you got a a, a a rape in your jacket, if you got listen, man, don't think you getting off the bus and people you can hide it because them them counselors and SIS is gonna let them black hands know exactly who you are, right? So they gave the green light, and I'm like, damn, that's fucked up. My man supposed to be going home. Like I started building a relationship with the dude. Like this my man, right? And um, we used to sit in there. He used to tell me about his kids and his family while I'm getting tattooed. And uh, he like, man, so I see him walking the dude to the shower. But I heard they already gave us the warning in the unit. Like, listen, hey, make sure y'all get y'all water. Make sure y'all, you know, all the men, they letting us know, hey, make sure y'all do everything y'all need to do. We going on lockdown tonight. So I'm like, dang. They say, man, the Serrano's got some business they about to take care of. Right? So I'm like, fuck, bro. They always doing something, right? So I see it, and I see my man, my tattoo man. And he walking him to the shower with the other dude. And I'm like, damn, they put shower security on the Serrano just getting off the bus. 
And I said, when he came, I'm like, that must be the dude right there. So they give him shots, walks him to the shower. When they walk him to the shower, the dude took his clothes off. You know what I mean? Got got naked, sudded up a little bit, and they ran straight in there. Boom. When they ran in there, they killing him. They hitting him. But I, you know, they didn't kill him. I mean, excuse me, they hitting him, you know, but they did not kill him. Man, my man went to the hole, right? They sent the green light in the hole to kill him in the hole. And then Sully wound up strangling him in his sleep because he didn't kill it. He didn't finish the job on the yard. And that's how, that's why I say the Serenios are the most vicious. You know what I'm saying? Because the Serenios, like even in the hole, if you get, if the homies get into the Serenios on the yard, they know sign language, but the white people do too. They know sign language. You know, they know Spanish. And if you even think you learn in Spanish, now they're going to switch it to Ebonic, broken language, Spain. You know what I'm saying? Like, you so, it's like, it's like, like, you know, they got codes. They got, you know, and, 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 and you know, they dangerous, man. They, they militant. They working out mandatory workouts. You know what I mean? They, you know, mandatory workouts. And if they get that green light, they coming. And they, they it's their job to kill you. You know what I mean? Like, they, they sworn to that game. That too, man, didn't didn't do what he was supposed to do, so they killed him. Yeah, they killed him, man. They they strangled my man and his sleep in the hole, man. You know, I'm like, damn, Snappy. So now I got memories of him telling me about his kids and the, and this is shit that started to hit me, like being locked up, like, like, damn, Snappy. First y'all send him to kill somebody. He bought to go home. Man got kids, right? Then you turn around and on top of it, because he didn't finish the job. You send word to the hole to kill him? That's fucked up, man. Man in his sleep, you kill a man in sleep because he wanted to go home to his family. So now these are the things that I started to see, like, like, man, what the fuck? Like, what the fuck am I in? Like, what the fuck am I, you know what I mean? And it fucked me. I ain't gonna lie, that fucked me up, Slim. Like, and I was beefing with the black hand that I found out did it. I I, I like, he couldn't, like, I had wind up, you know, I had wind up catching some dope. And he came to me like, hey, what's up, homie, ADC? You know, I heard you got some dope. So I ain't got nothing. I don't got nothing. Who told you that? You know what I mean? Who told you I got stuff? I ain't got nothing. You know what I mean? Yeah, because I was beefing with him. Like, man, this bitch ass nigga. You really it's... going to sit there and send that boy. And he was a young dude, too, man. And he was a good dude, man. He was like, man. I asked him, I said, man, why you a Serene, yo? Why you in the gang? He like, man, he like, man, my parents, man, they was gang members, man. I'm a gang member. He said, man, but when he was going home, he was going to be done with it, just take care of his kids, and he was going to start a tattoo shop. And they jungle, him. man. Like we said, it's it's the jungle in there, man. Eat. Yeah, it is, man. It's it's fucked never die, right? It's fucked up, Snell. It's fucked up, Snell. Tough man, to get ate and spit out. Yeah, yeah, it is, right? It is. It is. And it's like, the older I got, the more I started to realize and the more I started to see and understand, it's like, I am so I'm like, like, man. And that's what really led me into the journey of getting back in them law, and getting getting into the law library and fighting my case, man. I was like, man, I'm not about to die in here, man. I'm not about to, like, like, man, I'm watching older people catch cancer. They willing out dead old men and shit. I'm like, oh, like you might look to the left, somebody you 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 seen on Snap or on the ID channel, he's sitting right beside you and you looking like, man, the fuck? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? So then they gave me two public safety factors, so FCI or low was out of the question for me, you know. Let me ask you this, right? How long you been out now? I've been out uh 13 months. 13 months. You appreciate your freedom? Yeah, I do, man. I do. I like, like, I'm I'm so fucked up. Like, if a lot of people once, you know, a lot of people are gonna look me up, you know, they're gonna wonder who I am because of this interview. And they're gonna see a lot of bullshit. They're gonna see a lot of shenanigans. I got a tour with a lot of goofy people in the city. You know what I mean? But I, I do a lot of good also, right? And like I'm ashamed of myself. Like I ain't even gonna lie to you. Like I'm like I get calls every day from men locked up, from men on the streets, and they like they like psych. You frontline psych. You never been 
you you this not for you. This is like, come on, you we we hold you to this standard, right? And you know, but it's like my pride wouldn't let nobody constantly talk about me through social media. My pride wouldn't let nobody, you know, I I I come from a prideful neighborhood that is like, you know, like by any means I'ma get to you or I'ma get you, right? You know what I mean? So, you know, I said, fuck it. At first I I I backed away. I tried to duck this shit. You know what I'm saying? I tried to apologize. Like, look, man, I'm sorry, y'all on your YouTubes or your, your bullshit. And I don't, I, I, this is not my herb. You know what I mean? This is not my realm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I went to jail. We had, you know, flip phone. We wasn't on YouTubes or Instagrams and all that. And then I, I literally got put in a time capsule and skyrocketed to the future. You know what I'm saying? So, but my pride is there. Like, I've never been called, I've never been talked to or played with. You know what I'm saying? Without me stepping to you or meeting you somewhere to do, and we, we you know, had this understanding, or we figure out who to, you know, I, I, I'm going to show you I'm a man, right? And I got I got caught up in this dumb shit, right? You know what I mean? Let me but, stop you. And, Let me stop you for a minute, right? You tell me, I'm going to show you that I'm, that I'm a man, right? A lot of times, these young dudes, right? You were a young dude right. who went to jail. You know, they right. get caught up in, yo, man, what a true definition of a man is, right? Right, right. And they, and they make a mistake that costs them their life. Them dudes you were in prison with that ain't never getting out. Those right. are the dudes that were like, "Yo, man, let this dude hurt my pride, man," and I blew his brains out. Now, right. now nobody knows me anymore. Now I gotta rob and take because I can't even get myself a nacho. You know, right. you've been in that position before where you know you were looking at the rest of your life in prison. Small thing. Hey, who was it? Uh, Nelson Mandela said, "Don't let people with dirty feet run through your mind." Right. Mm. So whoever you're beefing with or, or whatever your situation is. Man, listen, it ain't that serious. I learned this right. from Cedric Dean out of North Carolina, did 25 years. He said, hey, man, if it ain't serious enough, serious enough to kill him about, it ain't serious enough to be beefing about. A lot of that right. shit, man, man, you're home. You're free, man. Live your best life. And, you know, you're, you're in D.C. now, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm in D.C. now. It ain't easy to walk out of federal prison and go back to D.C. probably. I can only imagine what it's like to go out there, right? You need a strong support system. You got it. You, you, you're out there. You were getting money. You were doing whatever you were doing. It's hard to go work a nine to five. But, man, yeah. I interviewed a dude about two months ago. Got out of prison with nothing. Worked two jobs. Built this credit up. The man went and got a loan. He's got an Airbnb now. He's got a sneaker store in Atlanta. There's ways, man. There's avenues. As long as we don't keep ourselves in this cage or keep our, you know, keep ourselves sheltered. I want to see you succeed, man. I didn't know I'm how to say that. I want man, to see I'm, you succeed, bro. I appreciate it, man. I definitely appreciate it, man. You know, because it's it's like you say, man. You know, it's like it's like going into the system, right? You know, dude, tell one one, one homie said, man, egg yolk from the quarters, right? When I first got the pole out, he said, man, be careful, right? I said, be careful of what? He said, dudes down here want one or three things from me. I said, what's that? He said, to trick you, right? To rob you. Right or to kill you, you know what I mean. So, you know that mentality. I came into the streets like, okay, I'm gonna leave all that jail thinking that shell that I had to build up in jail, that protective shell that that always on God. I can leave that in jail, right? And I can come home and I can let my God down, you know. And it's just like jail, man. It's the, it, people say, oh, them jail always you still institutionalized the lessons in jail will protect you in the streets also because it's life lessons right so i came out and a lot of dudes man you know they it's a lot of personal uh personal intent and it's a lot of uh arterial motives for everything that a lot of these dudes do in this world man and it fucked me up now where you feel like you're back against the wall or you feel like I got a result to what I know or what I've been taught that, you know, I got to, I got to, I got to, you know, I got to do for me now. So doing for me is, you know, resorting back to that bullshit or any bullshit that a lot of us returning citizens might get caught up in because we step the dudes thinking that dudes are genuinely trying to help us or thinking that dudes like understand that, you know, we come from the same struggle and the same, you know, the same, yoke that you just came from like help give us a hand and 
you know, dudes, man, dudes, you know, they 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 out for self, man. And it ain't no, it ain't too many people like you that's that's genuine about I'm trying to help you or or, or, or I want to help lift you up. Or I want to see you succeed. I understand what you've been through. I understand what you're going through. You know what I'm saying? This dude's saying, yeah, I know what you've been through. I know what you're going through. But that's you. That's on you. That's your life. I'm living mine. I found my way. You need to go find yours. Tell you this. You know on my channel, a lot of a lot of women, men, they tune in because it's like a community, man. We all been through it. We know what the struggle is. But right. you're, you're in the driver's seat now. You determine where you end up. You determine your destination. It's up. Right. To you. you working right now? Yeah, you know, I I, I had uh, you know, I came home. Say, I, well, I saved my money up to leave it from jail. You know, I learned how to budget. I learned how to budget my money in jail, right? So I learned how to go without. Also, I learned how to sell. Even when I when I left the feds and went back up BC jail, but you know, for them years I was up there fighting that other case and, and trying to get my time back. Um. You know, I set up the jail like what three and a half years, right? And uh, I snuck my needle, right? I put my needle in my shirt when they called me, say, "Man, you going back on the rip?" I put my my sewing needle in my shirt, and I went through airports and all this shit. My little sewing needle got back up to jail because I learned how to make clothes. I learned how to sew my shoes up, you know. So I was able to save because I wasn't buying new shoes. I wasn't buying clothes. I wasn't buying. I learned how to embrace. You know, like, like I'm in jail. I don't need to look good for nobody. You know what I mean? As long as I got nice, clean clothes, I'm cool. You know what I mean? So I learned how to sew real good. And when I came home, you know, I had a little money. And I made some money on the street. I wound up opening me up a little business, buying a little box truck. And that's what I be running with. You know what I mean? I be doing moving. You know, uh, I move. Uh, I move. I do, uh, like, people, like, gutting out their houses I do junk removal, you know, people move, want, need something removed, I do that, you know what I mean? I do, you man, know. What? what was your job in prison, man? You worked in the kitchens, you worked, I mean, where nah, you I, just, I always been an order. Like, people gonna tell you in D.C. jail, I always got detail, you know, detail, orderly, you know, same thing. I always cleaned the units, you know what I mean? I got OSHA certified, you know what I mean? So I always clean, like, going in the feds. I got a kitchen job one time. And I got caught breaking metal in the kitchen. And I broke the pan. I broke the handle off the pan and tried to sneak it out there. <laughs> Tell you this. I they asked told you. me it was a floater. They told me it was a floater. <laughs> they said it go through the metal detector. My dumb ass walked through the metal detector. Motherfucker, me, 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 Lock me up. Let me tell you this. I asked you what your job was in prison because that box truck, gutting out houses, moving stuff, it beats being an orderly any day of the week, right? No, it do. It do. It do, cause it's funny, cause man, I I was the head orderly in most spots I was in. I was the head orderly, like I knew how to clean. I knew how to. I was never lazy, you know what I mean. So it was easy to come home and transition. Me always cleaning, me always working, me always painting, me always waxing the buffering. You know, I'm buffering the hallways and the corridors. I I wax so good. I'm doing it in the corridors and shit. You know what I mean. So. You know, but me always on the compound. I'm compound crew now. You know what I mean? I'm snow crew, but I was hustling too. So now I need these jobs. I need to move around unit to unit to do what I'm doing. And I run tickets for people. You know what I mean? So, you know, it was easy to come home and transition years of always moving around and, and working into the streets. You know what I mean? Just explain what I try to explain to people because look, man, I got a corner store. I came home with nothing, man. I got a corner yeah. store going where we sell hot food out of there. I got the YouTube channel. I own the paralegal business, which I'm, you know, I'm all people are always like, damn, bro, how do you do all this? You know why? Because I know what it's like to grow up fucked up. I know what it's like to grow up poor. So, you know, and I know what it's like to be in prison. And really, man, my mother didn't have no money. I'm white, right? People think, oh man, people have my man, my people were poor, man. My father was a junkie. My father died getting high. So I know what it's like. I know what the struggle is. So when I get out here, my mentality is I never want to be broke ever again. I never want right. to be broke again. I got two little twin boys. I never want them to go through what I went through. So that right. hustle mentality is, man, you can do it in prison. You can come out here and do it. We're going to get ready to close, Psych, right? But I, I really appreciate you coming on here, man. And I want, like I said, I, I mean this sincerely, brother. I can tell, I didn't know how this interview was going to go because you were 19, you had some murders, you're from D.C. Of course, I got that stereotype in my mind, like this dude's rough around yeah. the edges. But man, yeah. 
was a good interview, and I appreciate you coming on and sharing your story. I definitely appreciate your experiences. it, man. I'm going to plug your YouTube channel. It'll be in the, it'll be in the links. I'm going to probably do two videos, part one and a part two. But um, definitely appreciate you coming on. Anything you want to say before we go? Yeah, man, you know, uh, check this out. I'm going to talk. I'm going I'm to give y'all uh, uh, my YouTube. I just started YouTube, right? And uh, it's uh, D the underscore voice of DC. Right, please ignore rack of the silly shit that I was involved in. Mind you, I don't know nothing about Instagram. I don't know nothing about YouTube's. I don't. I'm, I was feeling my way. I got involved in the rack of dumb shit, but my my intentions and my heart is pure. You know, I got a lot to say. I got a lot of experience, and I've been through a lot. You know what I mean? And if I could reach out to at least one person, I'm cool with it. And I'm gonna take this. You know, I, I'm gonna take this opportunity. I'm gonna take this all the friends that you gave me. And I'm going to move with it. So, you know, just, uh, you know, y'all, please, man, tap it to the voice of D.C. My man said he going to help me find the editor to help me do everything I need to do, you know, to 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 keep y'all in the tune, you know. And, uh, man, just, you know, just look out for me, man, you know. And, uh, man, if you got anybody in jail, man, or in the system, man, and when they get on that phone and they saying that they are, when you ask them, do they need or, or they all right? And they tell you they all right, you know, I'm saying 80% of the time they not, man. So make sure y'all love with y'all people that's behind the walls, man. You know what I mean? Because it ain't the biggest, the biggest fight in this world is up here. And that's all they doing all day. They in here and they rest and they fight. You know what I mean? They struggling now. You know, and uh, you know, but I definitely appreciate it, man. I definitely appreciate, you know, the opportunity, you know, to share this platform, which I can't lie, you know, when you told me your history and what you were part of, you know, first thing I thought, I got I got judgmental like, oh yeah, he one of the ones that look down on, right? He one of the ones that look at us in a different light than what we need to be looked in, right? And you know, so I didn't know how this would go. You know what I mean? But like you said, man, I feel the genuineness. You know what I'm saying? I feel the sincerity. You know, and I definitely appreciate. You know, the genuineness. I definitely appreciate. You know, and I, you know, I ain't. I was looking for loaded questions and everything. You know what I mean? That ain't me, man. That ain't what I do. But anyway, I'm gonna tell people, man, go check out this man's channel. It's in the links, both videos. Like, subscribe, Blood on the Razor Wire TV. With respect, until tomorrow, we're out. Thank you.